Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Regina. So tonight I'm going to show you how I do my alcohol ink, epoxy wine glasses, um, flask, and shot glasses. I'll show you how I affix the um, glasses and everything else to the um, tumbler turners. I'll show you the actual tumbler turners that I built along with what supplies you'll need. <clears throat> so first thing first, you will need your supplies, right? So we have our flask. I've already gone ahead and um, unscrewed it because this is the portion that's going to go into the tumbler turner. I have my shot glass and I have my wine glass. So my supplies for this would be I'm going to stuff my wine glass with this styrofoam turner. This will be for my shot glass. And of course, I have my handy dandy tape for my flask, along with a piece of styrofoam that I've cut. Now, <clears throat> because the holes on the uh, tumble turners are larger, you'll need something that you can put into the inside of the groove of the PCP, or excuse me, PVC pipe, so that it can stabilize your flask so it's not flopping around. So what I did was, you know how we get these from the dollar store so that we can use this portion on our tumbler turners? Well, I've cut little pieces of this off and I stuffed that inside the hole on the PVC pipe um, just to give it some more secureness with the flask. And then I wrap it around with tape just so everything stays adhered. So we have this piece to use and we also have our epoxy. Right. So, you know, working with epoxy, you need to make sure that you use your gloves. Um, you'll need to have your popsicle stick so that you can stir and get the epoxy set up the correct way. You will also need to have a mask. Right. When using epoxy, because epoxy is pretty potent, um, you know, it's a great smell. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself. Um, and then just to show you, this is the tumbler turner that I have built. Um, it is an eight tumbler turner. Um, <clears throat> it's not the best. I will be redoing mine, but for now, this works for me. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and get this flask affixed to the PVC pipe here. So what I'm going to do is take two of the little pieces that I've cut so far. I'm going to push that just about halfway inside the uh, PVC pipe so that a piece of it still, you know, hangs out so it can kind of give a little bit better support once I push this flask in. So then I'll take my flask. Remember, I've already um, opened it up, right? I'm only going to stick this piece through the hole. So I'm going to hold on to a little bit of the uh, the styrofoam that I've turned or tore off and then I'm going to push this flask into the hole so as you can see this is secured the flask is not moving so to make it to where I know it will not fall off through the night because I'm going to let this run through the night I take my tape and now what I'm going to do is so you can see I have this piece of the flask leaning up against the side of the uh, PVC pipe. I'm going to take my black tape that I purchased from Dollar Store and I'm going to start wrapping it around, securing the top piece of the flask, right, that you use to open it up with around. So that just gives it more support <clears throat> so that I know it will not fall off through the night. So I just continue to wrap it a couple of times just to make sure, okay, it's really tight and secure. <clears throat> okay, so this is how I affix my flasks to the tumbler turner. Now, as far as the glasses go, of course, I'm just going to take uh, this piece here, stuff it all the way down inside of the glass. <clears throat> Push it all the way down. 
and then I'm just gonna push this up onto my turner. And actually, I think I'll move this one over to here on the end, because that's just a little shorter. Okay, so that's nice and secure. And then I take this piece, and these I ordered off of Amazon. So I ordered these, um, they come in this size, they come for 20 um, ounce sizes, 30 ounce sizes, along with your sponges also. So I'm just gonna stuff part of this inside the glass till it's nice and secured in the glass. <clears throat> and then I'll take this and put this on the turner. And I just turn it on until it is tightly affixed as well. So now I have my three pieces on the tumbler, turner, ready to go. So first thing first, what we want to do is make sure that we mix our epoxy now, I know a lot of people um, pour their epoxy into two different cups to measure out first, and then they pour that, like both of those, into a third cup. I don't do that. I mix everything <laughs> into one cup. One, it saves supplies and it saves time for me. Um, and I still get the same results. So we're gonna move on to that step, but I'm going to affix my uh, mask first. Then I'll get the little cups ready, <clears throat> put my gloves on, and then show you how I measure out. So give me one second and we'll be right back. Okay, so it's going to be kind of hard to hear me at this point, but I'll still talk this through. So you have two parts. You have your part A, which says here part A, and then you have your part B right here. You need to have your mixing cups. These are the mixing cups that I will use. And I get them from a medical supply company, and I'll get the name of it. They come 100 in a sleeve, and I was able to get these for $1 a pack, right? So again, I'll find the medical company that I ordered from because I ordered like a gazillion of them. Um, and I'll make sure that I have that information for you. So what you're gonna wanna do is measure out equal parts into the cup. So since I'm going to do three pieces, um, I would probably do somewhere around 20 milliliters first, right? Just to get, and that's total, just to get the overlay on and to be able to do the alcohol ink and to spray it. <clears throat> um, now it just depends on if you're doing it piece by piece. You know, some people may use a cup for each. I don't. I use one cup. I'm gonna mix both parts together in that one cup, stir it really good, and then I'm gonna apply. I don't care that I have bubbles in mine um, when I'm applying it because the alcohol ink, or excuse me, the alcohol, once the alcohol ink goes on and I use my heat gun, that's gonna clear out the bubbles, okay? But if you were putting on like a clear coat just on top of something, you wanna make sure you stir really slow for like three to four minutes so that it mixes very well and there's less bubbles. For this job, again, because I'm using the heat gun, I'm gonna mix really fast <laughs> and in one cup only. So I will use 10 parts of this and then 10 parts of part B. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> Same cup, I will now go up to 20 milliliters here.
And now I'm just going to stir this together. Now, some people actually put this on a warmer so it can get pretty liquidy, um, so it's easier to stir. So as you can see, you know, it's still kind of thick, but it's starting to warm up because of my hands. So I'm just going to keep stirring that to mix it really good. <clears throat> I go all around scraping, getting off of the stick making sure it combines very well. You can see that there is quite a bit of bubbles that are in my mixture <clears throat> but again I don't care because I'm going to use my heat gun and the heat gun will take out these bubbles I just want to mix it very well so that part A and the part B mixes very well together Okay, so that's about enough mixing that I'm going to do. So as long as I know it kind of runs off the stick, that's good enough for me. And I've not had a problem with it not um, drying properly or anything like that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my machines on. And as you can see, I did move this wine glass over here. Um, from this other spinner because for some reason this doesn't want to come on tonight so I have to investigate that but I've moved it over here so let's get everything turned on and spinning mm. Okay, so I have these silicone mats that are down to catch any of the drippage. And then about once a week, I pop off all of the drippings from the silicone mats so that they're back to their regular color. Don't look as messy, but for me, I really don't care um, because it's just to catch the droppings. You also wanna make sure that when you have these mat or flasks on, that they do not touch the bottom of, um, or the bottom does not touch the mats when they're spinning as well. So make sure that your sticks are high enough to where they will spin evenly without touching or folding. All right, so we'll give it one more tug here. And now what I do, and everybody does this differently, but I just come across and I drip like this all the way across and around. <clears throat> okay, so we still have more left over so that I can use it for the glass and for the wine glass. For the shot glass, I should say. So then I can start to smooth it out with my fingers and it will smooth out even more as it continues to turn. <clears throat> but I wanna make sure that I do have a nice coat on so it evenly spreads when I put the alcohol ink on as well as the heat because the heat from this um, is gonna make it run even more. <clears throat>
So again, I'm just going here and spreading it through so that each um, part of the flask has a clear coating over it. And I can see some spots still on the back. I like to go across the bottom. <clears throat> And you don't want too, too much on because then when it starts to spin and dry, it'll gather and bulk up at the bottom. Okay, so just a little bit more on the back here. Just to make sure I have everything covered. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the wine glass. <clears throat> now basically do the same thing. I'll just give it a little bit more of a stir. <clears throat> and then I'm going to start spreading around. So what I start to do is I go cut a corner and I start to um, pull around the glasses. <clears throat> making sure I get all around that rim up here too, right? And the rest of the glass <clears throat> so that there are no dry fillings. just to make sure that everything is coated evenly all around the glass. And as you can see, with me being able to turn the glass, that's because there are some dry spots, along with this particular sponge that I'm using is not as tight anymore. But when it stops stopping when I'm trying to apply the, uh, the epoxy, then I know that it's evenly coated all around the glass. And then I want to make sure that I get around the rim here as well as the bottom. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put a little bit like this on the bottom here. I don't want it to bulk up too much around the bottom part. <clears throat> so we'll let that spin for a minute. And you can also take the tape and line it on the inside of your glass so that way None of the epoxy, if it starts to run, it won't go down the inside of your glass or around the rim. But 
I stopped doing that because I also have a um, a heating knife that I can go across the rim and kind of melt it off and scrape it off so that it's an even smooth feeling in case I get epoxy, you know, on the inside or the top of the rim. Okay, and now we'll do the shot glass, same way. And if you feel you have too much on there, you can always scrape off. Now there are others that like to use and apply their epoxy with a um, silicone stick, but I don't. I just use my fingers. <clears throat> I like to make sure that I can feel the slickness on the glasses to where there are no dry spots. And then I'm just going to dab a bit around the bottom. So I'll take my finger, dip it, and put it around the bottom. So as you can see, I still have just a little bit of epoxy left. So I probably could have just mixed seven and a half of part A against seven and a half of part B and I would have had more than enough to spread across these three pieces. So you can always go back and put a little bit more on if you see something that doesn't look right, just to make sure before we put the alcohol ink on and the heat gun. <clears throat> So at this point, I'm going to remove my gloves, get my alcohol inks ready, and then show you how I apply those. There's a piece of something on the back of here. Looks like a piece of lint or something was on the back of uh, of the flask there. So we'll just smooth this back out. everything together. Mm. Now, I keep all of my alcohol inks are inside of here. I have a lot of different um, alcohol inks. <clears throat> I'm going to use black. This red. And this white. So for this order that came in, um, she wanted to have a black, red, and white um, flask set and then she wants her wording to be in black versus silver or any other color so <clears throat> I love 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 
the Panada brand of alcohol ink. I get this off of Michaels. You can also get it from Amazon, but I seem to get all the colors that I want from Michaels. These I got off of Amazon, and I'm only using the red and the right white of this brand because I've run out of Panada. So we'll get started. I'm going to shake this up. Okay. So then you just place them however you want them. And your heat gun is going to get it to swirl around. So I just go and drop all around. I like to make sure I get the rim so that it can kind of run down, as you can see, right? So I'll put it on the end here so it can run. And then since I have the black open, I'll go ahead and do the glasses also. Okay, I'll take my red and start doing the same, just making drops all over. And then I'll do the same for the white. I'm going to let that spin for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and get my heat gun ready.
And just so that you can see a little bit better, you can see how I have got the colors, right? <clears throat> That's what it looks like without the heat gun having gone through. Yeah. And I'm going to take the heat gun and I'm just going to start blowing. <sighs> just going over it so that I can start to activate the alcohol. <sighs> And you can see how it's swirling, right? Based upon how I push the heat through. So you can see the design that it will start to make. Same with the glass. So you can see how with the glass, it is starting to swirl. So I'll just heat it a little bit more, just to get it going a little bit more. And you can see it's starting to move around and through. Can I go under the bottom? just to get the bottom twirling and the same here for the flask. And then I just let it go. And then this is what the shot glass is over here looking like. And again, mm. so now all of the pieces turn. And 
And if you want more coverage on the bottom, you can add more ink to where the flow, you know, around on the bottom as well. But at least you can see how it's actually swirling the colors. So I will let that um, set continue to spin through the rest of the night. And then in the morning, I'll get up and I'll turn it off to let it just cool down some, right, from the motors running through the night. And then I'll add the words. So, of course, for that set, that is another um, ratchet, savage, and classy, right? So I'll go ahead and add the letters onto the flask and the wine glass and the shot glass. I'll show you that. And um, then I'll put another coating of epoxy over it just to seal over the letters so that um, it's smooth and they won't come up. I'll let that spin for about another mm, eight to 10 hours. Um, then I'll just turn it off and let it dry for another full 24 hours. And then the set will be ready to go. Okay, thank you for watching.